in three, two, one. Welcome class of 2033 to your first actual year of school. Now, I know that these last 11 years of virtual school may have been interesting to say the least. While some of us thought you would be the first graduating class to spend all of your years online, look, you get to spend your last year offline. Somehow, everyone here managed to get a perfect score on every test, for every class, for every year. You are all so far above average. Thus, we have some extremely high expectations for you in this, your senior year of high school. So why have I gathered you here today? Charles Lee, you put that phone away right now. But you don't need to Zoom. I am IRL. Just look up and enjoy the VR without the V. Where was I? Ah, yes. Well, I thought that since you have pretty much no experience with actually going to school, that I, as a teacher who has gone to this very school, could help you out a little. Have you ever heard of the three R's of reading, writing, and arithmetic? Well, those are seen as the classic building blocks of learning, and I want to use them as a reference to help you be prepared for offline schooling better. Let's start off with reading. Did you keep up with reading the recent headlines of the last several years? Oh, well, a headline is the title on top of the story. It's like the big words on a meme post. Yeah. So anyways, I remember when I was a high school student and the pandemic had just started infiltrating my life. Those were the simple days when all I had to worry about was something called Trump tweets. Now things seem so different. Younger me could have never imagined that now here in 2032, we're about to see the inauguration of President-elect Ocasio-Cortez. And who would have guessed that the Jurassic Park down in Australia would have gone so out of control? I mean, I'm pretty sure I could think of a few movies as to why that was a bad idea, but that's not the point today. Looking back, it's been a very, very, very chaotic 12 years. You had the extreme pleasure of experiencing everything firsthand as children, or at least seeing it through screens. But here we are now in person, writing. You're probably so used to having everything so accessible with the internet. But here at school, we have something called paper. Essentially, it's a Google Doc, but in real life. I know this kind of technology must seem crazy to you guys, but it was used every day back then. And since you guys have never used or written on paper, you'll have to learn penmanship. And that's why we signed all of you up for a mandatory elective called handwriting. Although such a course was originally taken by children when I was in high school, it's grown obsolete in the last decade. And so here we are making it retroactively necessary again. You'll be learning to write the letters instead of typing them. You'll have to hold down your paper and watch your pencil or pen make marks on it. There is no autocorrect, so you will need to learn how to spell properly. Oh, and emojis and abbreviations are not going to be recognized by your teachers as approved styles of writing. So please not make sure not to do that. Finally, assignments on paper are going to take so much more time than on computers. And there is no copy pasting for anything ever. Lastly, arithmetic. I have a couple math problems for you. They are word problems, but really practical. They are multiple choice, so try following along. One, you have been getting up 20 minutes before online classes. What do we call it when you wake up 20 minutes before class now that we are offline? A, absent, B, tardy, C, opportunity, or D, a chance to log in again. The answer is A, there is no online schooling anymore. And unless you live next to the school and are willing to skip showering, you are going to miss your first class. Two, you are standing at the school bus stop and your schedule says the bus should be arriving at 7-11, but it is now 7-12. What do you do? A, wait a few more minutes. B, see if you're logged on to Zoom. C, go home. Or D, call technical support. The answer was A, you should wait a few more minutes. Lastly, three, the break between classes is five minutes. You have journalism with Miss Terry down in room B114. And next is Mr. Alice's geography class all the way over in room D411. Sally is coming from PE and going to choir in room C202. How much time will the two of you have to talk in between classes? A, zero minutes, B, one minute, C, two minutes, 
or D, three minutes? The correct answer is A. You both need to get to your classes. Like the answer that I just gave, if you follow my advice, you will get all A's. Well, that was the three R's of reading, writing, and arithmetic. But I have a fourth R for you, reality. Here are some like tips related to our senses. Sight. There is no camera anymore, so you're never out of frame. What you're doing in class, we can hear and see you. This includes, of course, the need to wear pants. Sound. If you're used to lunch being your quiet time and quiet break in the middle of the day, get ready for the complete opposite. Lunch is actually the time you're free to socialize as much as you want in what we call the cafeteria. Smell. While the smells in the cafeteria are great, the smells coming from each other are sometimes not. I appreciate your comfort when you are online, but please, please remember to take a shower each day for yourself and for the olfactory sanity of everyone else. You are lucky you do not have certain bad memories of middle school, but if you do not take good care of your hygiene, you will scar your nostrils for life. Taste. While in the cafeteria, you can choose from a variety of food options that you eat in a single setting rather than snacking all day. Most food does not come in metallic bags. In fact, most food actually comes from the earth. And with the cafeteria, people prepare the food fresh. Please try new food. And lastly, touch. You know how you can not touch each other for the last 11 years? Yeah, that one is perfectly fine. Keep not touching each other. In conclusion, class of 2033, welcome to offline schooling. This is going to be your best year ever at school. Thank you. World leaders, welcome to the arms race. That's right. This auction is an arms race to see who holds US democracy dearest. Remember that arms stands for auction for the remaining memorabilia of a stolen election. My name is Dixie Golder, over the shoulder boulder holders, and I am a certified auctioneer from Alatex, Alabama, Arkansas, Vadahoma, in the U.S. of A. I am here to hold a fully corrupt auction for you fine folk, because I was sent here by the big man, my true President Trump. Oh, you thought I meant God? Well, maybe they are one and the same. Now, today we are offering you international leaders a chance to buy into a bit of the United States. I am thrilled to be standing here tonight at the arms auction, prepared to auction off many lucrative items from the several heroes who bravely risked their lives several months ago to defend our democracy on the steps of the U.S. Capitol building. These heroes, who shall unfortunately have to remain anonymous for legal reasons are auctioning off the prizes they gloriously won on the battlefield of nancy pelosi's office that fateful day january 6th oh i hope you all have enjoyed your imported big Macs slathered in our classic american grapes to slide it down your gullet a little easier take a sip of that medium-sized 12 gallon coca-cola today i will be sharing with you three insider tips for those who may be new to our capitalist bid wars, as well as giving you a bit of the preview of your items. Now, you fun folks, I'm ready to show you three tips. Yes, three tips, three tips for the Vindemar. Tip number one, yes, leaders, it's time for tip number one. I'm ready for tip number one. Are you ready? Are you ready for tip number one? Tip number one, here goes. Bring a magnifying glass or binoculars to get a closer look at the neat details on the speaker's podium. Oh, yes, President Jinping. This would be an appropriate time to use your drones to fly over and get a sneak peek. The speaker's podium is one of our largest items from the proud demonstration. In fact, it even comes with its own Capitol building glass shards from the broken windows. Bin starts at two Caribbean island colonies. Also, you can use your magnifying glass or binoculars to spy on your fellow bidders. No need to be ashamed, we all do it. And no, President Abinader of the Dominican Republic, you cannot participate. Your voting machines screwed Mr. Trump over in our last election. You've had your piece of our democracy. 
So, tip number one, bring your magnifying glass or binoculars. They're fine too. Yes, sir, they are just fine. Let's move on to tip number two. Are you ready for tip number two? I sure am. Here goes tip number two. There are reasons why we are holding this auction here in Switzerland. The Swiss bank accounts make your purchases practically untraceable, making it the perfect place to keep your money through this bidding process. Some people in the U.S. are on the hunt for these stolen items, so we like to keep this on the low, as the kids would say. <laughs> also, people don't know Switzerland. They never get involved in anything. They won't bid, so there's no home court advantage in having it here. Oh, speaking of burglary getting involved, we have one can of beer repellent that was used by our heroes as they stormed the capital to defend our deteriorating democracy. Bin starts at three Iranian oil rigs. And that concludes tip number two. We're moving right along. Yes, we're moving right along to tip number three. One, two, three. Yes, sir. Tip number three. Here goes. If you want to get your favorite items, you have to get noticed. Your bid will get lost in the sea of shouting, so you have to be the loudest in the room to be heard. The cacophony of politicians yelling over each other to be heard is music to our American ears. I mean, it wouldn't be a true gathering of the world's finest if we could actually piece out what you're saying. Oh, don't worry, Kim, we'll make sure to bring out a stepladder for you. Speaking of needing things, I'm going to take this opportunity to show off one of our rarest items. The actual button our commander in chief would press to acquire a Diet Coke at any time of day in office. Rumor has it, if you press it today, you might get some of his holy spray tan on your fingers. Oh, yes, Mr. Putin, we knew you'd love that one. Ben starts at 3.1 billion Pfizer doses. Well, folks, that marks the end of our time together tonight. Oh, don't worry. No blood alcohol percentage is too high to fire your helicopters. One side note, all the proceeds of this auction will go to the re-election of the inspiration behind this arms event. Bet no one can trump his bid to office a second time. Ah, quick review of our three yes sir, one, two, three tips for tomorrow's arms race auction. Yes, this is an auction. Yes, tomorrow is the auction. Three tips. Bring your magnifying glass. Hold your money in a Swiss account and get noticed. Follow my tips and enjoy some fun and mostly legal bin tomorrow. Take your piece of our deteriorating democracy, your own symbol of the destruction and decay occurring in our government, as we try and convince you that we're still superior. Because remember, it would be a true tragedy if we didn't capitalize on it. Right, Prime Minister Boris? Thank you.